this is probably one of the most difficult things that I've ever heard uh, people discuss, right? People say you don't talk about politics. You don't talk about how much money people make. And the last one is you don't talk about faith. But we're going to dive into it and we're going to attack this topic in this episode of Beyond the Ball. Let's get after it. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on, family? Hey, everybody, thanks so much for all the support, all y'all who've been rocking with the podcast. You've been leaving reviews on Apple. You've been rating us on Spotify. You've been subscribing to the YouTube channel. I greatly appreciate it. I greatly appreciate it. And if there's ever a question you have or an episode you want us to do, please just send us a message to Beyond the Ball Media on Instagram. Beyond the Ball Media, okay? It's easy. Beyond the Ball Media on Instagram. Send us a message and we'll unpack that topic and then we'll make sure to tag you so that you get the credit because you're the one who introduced it to the topic. So why shouldn't you get credit? All right. So talking about faith and the reason why I want to discuss this is because one, I've never necessarily done it. I've never done an episode specifically on faith. Uh, And the reason why I want to talk about it today is because I was in the kitchen and I had other ideas for after we just did the mental health episode and I was thinking about doing another episode about helping you prepare for the transition after college and everything like that but it was really laid on my heart to do one on faith because I personally am a believer of Jesus Christ right I believe in the father the son the holy spirit the whole triune God okay so make no mistake about it I believe in the holy bible I believe that what the bible says is true and if somebody ever asks me how I feel about certain topics and certain things, it's not my opinion, okay? My beliefs are rooted within the Bible. So what the Bible says, that's what I believe, and that's how I operate my life. And understanding that, I grew up grew up in the church. So at a very young age, uh, my, my dad cut the lawn at a church, and my mom was one of the, uh, she was one of the accountants, I believe, or she was like, uh, like a secretary type deal in the church. I know she had an office, like she was in the front office. So I believe she was like, uh, an accountant, accountant slash secretary. Right. Uh, and then from there, you know, I, before, when I went off to college, I knew of Jesus, I knew of God, but I didn't have an active relationship with God. And after I, Went to college, I strayed, of course. You know, I'm, I'm living the college life. I'm, I'm partying it up and, you know, drinking, promiscuous, just doing all of that. And then I fell to a spot to where I was feeling extremely empty, right? Because I, I was on the basketball team. I was enjoying life out at the University of Tyler. And there wasn't much to do out in Tyler, Texas. Everybody just waited for the weekends to get drunk or people got drunk in the middle of the week. Like it didn't matter. Okay. It didn't matter. But that was the only thing that we really did in Tyler. And in thinking about all this, after I graduated, I brought some of those habits with me. Right. And it's dangerous because when we leave a certain environment, there are certain habits that we have that create a level of comfort for ourselves or for others, right? So we we have habits that that create comfort and with those particular habits and that comfort, it allows us not to deal with certain things that we never dealt with before. Because dealing with things that are uncomfortable and growing is extremely uncomfortable, especially if you have to do things that you're not used to doing, right? So when I came back to Dallas, then I began to go to church. And as I began to go to church, I began to build my relationship with Jesus. And then things began to get exposed. It began to get exposed how growing up, I didn't have the best relationship with my dad. He always provided for us, right? My dad provided for us. He was a disciplinarian. But at the same time, one of the things that I ended up developing was a strong resentment towards my dad. Because when I was young, probably like anywhere between third and fifth grade, I, I, I was just laughing. My dad was wanting me to be more serious. And he said, son, why are you laughing? 
stop laughing. And I said, all right, dad. And at that moment, that was when uh, I became extremely just stone faced, right? Stone washed. All right, dad, I'm not going to laugh. And then I had to go to counseling later for dealing with that. And, and then some other things just began to come up. And like I said before, I was promiscuous in college. So then when I came back, now I'm wanting to be in a relationship but I didn't have the discipline to be in a relationship because I was used to being promiscuous. If I got into it and argued with one young lady, then I'd go over here and then I'd go hang out with a different, like it was just a negative environment that I was creating. It was a toxic environment I created for myself. But all in all, as time progressed and I began to grow in my faith and grow in my relationship with God, the thing that really stood out to me was the love right i was at a point to where i felt i was unlovable you hear me like i really felt unlovable because of my past behaviors because of my past sin okay and all because of these things and these behaviors and these habits and these broken relationships that I've created and I, I crushed and everything like that, I felt unlovable. And I'm not sure if you out there feel unlovable, have felt unlovable, or maybe you might feel this later in life. Who knows? But being in this spot and developing security and developing peace and developing joy by way of having a relationship with God, that was when things began to change for me. Did life get perfect? No, life did not get perfect. Life is still challenging now as I'm growing now as a father and as a husband and as an entrepreneur. Like I'm learning all of these things and sometimes it's very painful, okay? Sometimes it's very painful, but other times it's very joyous. Because like I said before, uh, when I began to develop my relationship with, with, with God and, and Christ, then I began to learn that identity or my identity isn't in the habits and the hangups that I had before, right? So the, what I want to share with you all today is that there's something called the Romans Road, okay? And in the Romans Road, if you've never heard of this before, the Romans Road is broken down plain and simple as this. So for anybody who, you know, you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your life, you've never said, well, I want to make him Lord over my life, right? I, I've realized that uh, I can't manage life on my own and I can't be the best version of myself running my own life. Then we have to make a decision, right? And I'm not I'm not pushing anybody today to, you know, make this decision. <clears throat> but if the spirit leads you and you feel something in you saying, well, maybe I need to, you know, maybe I need to make the decision to uh, accept Jesus Christ or. Or maybe you might need to make the decision to like repent of something that you've been holding on to a grudge, uh, a sin, a struggle, whatever it might be, you can submit it to God. Uh, but I want to walk you through the Romans road because this is how if you come in to connection with somebody or you meet somebody and and they see that you're a believer who's accepted jesus christ and they're like well how, how do i how do i get to have the opportunity and have the privilege to where i also can develop a relationship with jesus christ well then you can walk them through the romans road like i'm about to walk you through uh right now so understanding that we are all sinners by nature and by choice, right? Every day, we were born into sin, all because of Adam and Eve eating the apple. This introduced us to sin. This brought sin into our world. So understanding that, we're all exposed to sin. So therefore, we can't do anything to forgive ourselves of our own sin. So we have to submit that to Christ. So the first part of Romans wrote, the first verse is Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? That's everybody. That's all of us. 
we can't clean ourselves up. We can't be perfect. Then the next part is this, but th this is the benefit. This is the, this is the benefit. We can receive eternal life as a free gift. This is the free gift from God. Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. So we deserve to die based on us being in sin, being born in sin. We deserve to die. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is, Jesus Christ is part, he's the triune God. So it's Jesus Christ, it's God, and it's the Holy Spirit, right? So Jesus came down from heaven, right, off his throne. Like, he up there, he cool, he chilling, he don't got to come down here. But God said, Jesus, I need you to go down there. I need you to help the people out. They're sinning, they're struggling. So he came down in human form. And the Bible says that he lived a perfect life. He was tempted. Yes, he was tempted. The Bible even tells us that. But also, through the process of him being here, he's faced every temptation we can imagine so he can relate with the relate to us. Isn't that powerful? Like he came down, said, man, I see y'all down there struggling, but I don't want y'all to have any excuse. Right. I want to go down and I want to experience what you experienced to a heightened degree so that I can understand what you're struggling with, what that pain is. Right. And then he died on the cross for our sins, past, present and future. Imagine that. Like, imagine you're going to mess up next weekend and he already died for that. That's wild. That's wild right there. Right. <clears throat> and then uh, it says. So God demonstrated his love for us, his enemies. If we're sinning, sin ultimately is. Sin is turning away from God. That's what sin is. Right. If holiness is to the right. And sin is to the left. We're going left. So we're going closer to sin, closer to temptation, closer to struggle. And we're getting further away from holiness in Jesus on the right hand side. But Romans 5, 8 tells us, but God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Imagine you knowing that somebody was going to hurt you. You knew they were going to break your heart before you got in a relationship with them. But you say, you know what? I'm still going to forgive you. Like you knew somebody was going to steal something from you. But you're like, you know what? I'm still going to forgive you, even though I know what you're about to do. I know it's going to hurt me. I know it's going to cause pain, but I forgive you. That's what he did for us. And we must trust and surrender to Jesus as Lord. So. This is the part where we have to own and understand that, well, even if you don't, if you don't even completely understand it just yet, or you don't completely own it just yet, that's the, that's the, one of the most positive things about, uh, the, about the gospel is the fact that you don't have to completely understand it, but still God loves you in that. Jesus accepts you in that. It says in Romans 10, verses 9 through 10, and these references are from the Holy Bible, right? So they have different versions, NIV, New King James, Message Version, but all these scriptures are from the Holy Bible. But Romans 10, not 10, 9 and 10 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you say, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe he died for my sins. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and the mouth confesses is made into salvation. That's saying if you say it with your mouth, if you say, Jesus, I believe that you came down in human form, I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you were raised from the dead three days later. You're saved, period. And then here's the, here's the sinner's prayer where we can just walk through and you say, dear God, and feel free to repeat this after me. If you're saying, I want to accept Jesus and you're saying, I'm opening myself up. 
because I, I, I can't find what I'm looking for in the world. I can't find the peace. I can't find the joy. I can't find what I'm trying to find in the world. And friend, here it is. This is the part that's tough. It's tough to understand and accept based on what the world tells us, but we're not going to find what we want in the world. Maybe temporarily, but it won't last always. You can have money one, mi- one month. You can lose it the next month. You can have a house one year. You can lose it the next year. You can be married one day and gone the next, right? These things don't matter when we look at things with an eternal eye, right? Eternity. Talk that eternity talk. Okay, so the center of prayer is, Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I know my sin deserves to be punished. I believe Christ is the son of God who died for me and rose from the grave. I want to turn from my sin and trust Jesus Christ alone as my savior. Thank you for your forgiveness and everlasting life. I can now have faith in Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just said that, friend, I want to say congratulations to you on making the best decision you ever make in your life. Because now you no longer have to worry about where am I going when I die? By you accepting Jesus Christ, you're going to heaven. You're going to spend eternity with him. The Bible talks about how in the in Genesis, in the first book of the Bible, it talks about how he prepared a place for us to go when we die, even before we were born. Isn't that a place you would want to go? With somebody preparing a table for you, somebody just imagine. Imagine you going on a vacation. But nobody knew you were going on the vacation, but you show up unexpected and the house is prepared for you. You smell home cooked meal. You smell all the delicious fragrances going throughout the house because it was prepared for you. And that's what Jesus has done for us in heaven. And just I'm going to read this last verse. This is Romans five. And this is just about being in relationship and the relationship of peace with God. I want to leave this with you. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace. God, through our, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, today what I want to share with you is something that's more important than winning a game, something that's more important than being in a relationship, something that's more important than a, a, a party or any other type of celebration you can imagine by taking this time and by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior family, that's really going beyond the ball. You know what I'm talking about? Like that's preparing you for the eternal game and nothing else can prepare you for that. So I want to just encourage you to know this. Uh, If you prayed that prayer and you accepted Jesus Christ, As your Lord and Savior for the first time, congratulations. This is major. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you. Please let me know. Send me a message uh, to Beyond the Ball Media on Instagram. Or you can shoot me an email. You can send it to info at jonathanjonespeaks.com. And I'd love to celebrate with you. I'd love to pray with you. Uh... Or if you've already been a believer, right? You've already been a believer and you prayed that prayer and, you know, you asked for forgiveness. You asked to um, repent of your sins and you just ask God to forgive you and cleanse you of that. Then, friend, that's what it's all about. But family, uh, if this episode added value to your life, I know it did. But if you just want to share some feedback and let me know uh, how you feeling about the episode, comment just down below. And uh, please feel free to uh, share this. Share this episode with three friends. All right. Share it with three friends. 
because I know it will benefit their life just as well as it, it, it benefited mine. I feel great about this episode um, and not because of what I did, but just because of sharing the gospel. And I, I feel good. I feel good. Um, but family, until next time, uh, like I said, share this with three friends and also feel free you know, to leave a rate and review on the podcast on Apple, right? Just type in Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones. And um, this has been a Beyond the Ball media production. All right, family, until next time, this is Beyond the Ball where we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. Until next time, uh, peace and God bless. But let me pray us out. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to be able to share the gospel. Thank you for giving me a tug in my spirit to share the gospel. I pray, Lord, that um, somebody heard your word today. They accepted your truth and we can welcome them into uh, into the, the, the heavenly family, Lord God. I pray for anybody else out there under the sound of my voice who hears this prayer and who hears this message. I pray, Lord, if they've ever felt like they've strayed away, Bring them back to remembrance of you, Lord God. I pray for the uh, the, the the son, the, the daughter, the mother, the father who has heard of you, Lord. But I pray for them to be able to experience you, experience your peace. Like the Bible says, that passes all understanding and be able to experience your joy. That's everlasting. So, Lord, thank you for them. And thank you for bringing yourself and making yourself known to them. Have your way, Lord, and continue to uh, be glorified through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Peace. God bless.